So, 2 Thessalonians, and let's read verses 6 through 18 of chapter 3. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. And you have verse 7, Paul is emphasizing to follow us. Verse 9, he's emphasizing to follow us. We know us is uh, him and, and Silvanus and Timotheus. And it says, verse 10, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now then that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. That's... Uh, um, I like uh, the repetition there. The Lord of peace himself give you peace. Always by all means, the Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a token in every epistle, so I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to understand your word. And pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us, and pray that you, you would help me as I preach. Uh, we do praise you, thank you for the good news that Chris received you as a Savior, and pray that you would help him to grow, and uh, just help him to uh, find a good church in his area, and we just pray that, that you would help that young man and pray that you would help us as we come to your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. So, there is so much in this passage of scripture. It, and uh, if I was to give the, a title to this passage, it would be What Kind of Leaders to Follow? What kind of leaders to follow? Because um, Paul, we know, has addressed the Thessalonians that somebody has been saying, and he, that they've been saying it, and they they circulate it as if it was a. They were deceptive right from the beginning, saying that it, that Paul had said that they were in the day of the Lord, and Paul had written that. Church is supposed to be looking and watching and waiting for the Lord and working and, and looking for the rapture. And we're not going into the tribulation period. And Paul made that clear, but there were some that were trying to take the leadership. They're trying to take the leadership, and you almost wonder if they were something like Millerites. You ever hear of the Millerites? The Millerites? which gave rise to, what did the Millerites give rise to? The Millerites gave rise to, well, the Shakers, which we have, I don't know if there's any left, they keep dying off, but right in uh, Poland, Maine, Poland Spring, Maine, Shakers, but also that arose, they were, they influenced um, um, Ellen White, Ellen White? that um, was the leader of the Seventh-day Adventists. 
And but the Millerites were famous for they said the Lord was coming. I can't remember what year. They said the Lord is coming. You know, they didn't they weren't following what Paul wrote right here. They weren't following Paul. When Paul says follow us, he's his example, his godly example, but he's also saying, follow us what we've taught you. And we've taught you that you keep working till the Lord comes. You keep watching and waiting and looking for the Lord and keep busy till the Lord comes. And in this passage, there's some that they're not working at all. And you wonder if they're like the, the Millerites took and took the cows they took they they picked the, the um they picked the day that the Lord was coming. It was eighteen something. I can't. They brought the a lot of them took their cows up on the hill like a big hill and put white robes on the cows. You ever read about that? So the world, you know, the world, you know, it's bad enough that they think we're fools. I mean, I mean, it's their era. Uh, we are fools for Christ. Uh, but we bring, uh, it's, it's enough to bear the reproach of Christ. We don't want to add um, things that go beyond bearing the reproach of Christ. We don't want to do things that aren't biblical and bring reproach upon ourselves. But that's exactly the Millerites. They put robes on their cows, and they didn't just pick the day that the Lord was coming. They had picked the minute. Have you read about this? Did you read about it? Uh, they picked the minute that the Lord was coming so that some of these Millerites climbed up in the treetops, and at the moment they thought they were going to be caught up into the air, they jumped out of the trees. And I think that one or two of them, you have to Google that, Google that and read about that. But they quit working. They quit working because why work? Why, why, uh, why prepare our crops? Why get our, you know, why do all this work? Because the Lord is coming just a little bit here. And so... That's what they did. That's what they did. And Paul here is this, 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 this segment that has uh, tried to rise up here, the church at Thessalonica, and they're saying, as we already said, that we're in the tribulation period. We're in the day of the Lord. And whether they were just trying to hang on, um, they whatever it, this passage makes it obvious that there was some that wouldn't want they didn't want to work, and Paul is also making clear you don't want to follow you do not want to follow that kind of leadership. This isn't just you know we quote this verse uh, so uh, if any would not work neither should he eat, and we quote that verse and principle there is all through the Bible is that you're supposed to work. You're supposed to work and provide for yourself and your family. Uh, that's the principle of God's word. And the context here, though, the context here is there's this, um, as I already said, there's this struggle for who are you going to follow? Who are you going to follow? And Paul is saying, Paul is saying we have set an example before you, working night and day. Working night and day for God's work. Working night and day for the ministry of the Lord. We've set an example before you, and you ought to follow us. And when you have a leadership that doesn't believe in work, don't follow it. Don't follow that. Uh, don't follow that. And so 
uh, verse 6, Paul says, Now we command you, not just a suggestion, it's a very strong command, and he says, We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we said last week, that means that with all power, all authority, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother, so very specific, that walketh disorderly. That word disorderly, you'll see it here in verse 6, disorderly. You see it again in verse 7, for we behave not ourselves disorderly. And then you see it down in, well, you see the concept down in verse 14. It says, if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and it's the the word disorderly means uh, ne the neglectful of orders or duty, not following rules. The word was used of uh, in in New Testament days. It was used of a soldier who was marching out of rank. He's not following orders, and the Lord here is saying in this one. It says, "We command you." in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not Paul saying this. This is the Lord Jesus that is saying this, that you don't, you're not to follow those that are not walking in step with the Lord in the Lord's word. And especially in the context here of Thessalonians, you don't follow those that are teaching false eschatology. You know, we talk about separation, and we want to separate from worldliness. We want to separate from immorality. Uh, we separate from those that, well, foremost, those that aren't preaching the gospel. We don't want to link up with those that aren't preaching the gospel. But this is saying to withdraw in the context of Thessalonians is, you don't want to link up and fellowship with those that are teaching false eschatology, the things to come, the future. If um, we want, as uh, believers in the Lord, we want to fellowship with like-minded believers that believe the Lord's coming, that the rapture could happen any day. And if somebody doesn't believe that, Maybe they can, maybe they know the Lord is the Savior. Maybe they've been born again. And you can, uh, you can admonish them as a brother. But you don't want to link up with that. Because that kind of theology, that kind of teaching is going to just go down, 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 down. Um, so many cults and so many mainline denominations out there don't teach the that they don't mention they don't emphasize that the lord is coming and paul is saying you don't want that kind of leadership and what goes along with that is a slack a slack attitude uh in the work of the lord and the context here it seems like the work it's talking about uh, even though we know the principles of the Bible teach that you work to provide for yourself and your family, the work here Paul is talking about is work in the ministry. You don't want to follow the kind of leadership that it's not applying itself to the work of the ministry. And maybe they apply themselves, maybe they... You know, sometimes somebody can be a really hard worker. But when you're talking about a leader in ministry, are they a hard worker in the ministry, at the ministry? You read these verses through, and you think about these verses, and see if... See, um, so many times when I've heard this, these verses preached on, it hasn't been emphasized that this is referring to uh, church work, ministry work. Because uh, Paul is saying, Paul is giving his example. Um, Paul says in verse 7, 
You yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. And then there's the semicolon. He's continuing the thought. He said, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. So Paul is saying, we worked hard in the ministry. We worked hard in the ministry. I think of a church, and this is some. This is about 30 years ago now, and it was down in, in southern Maine, and uh, somebody was telling me that in their church, they their pastor was building a house. He's building a new house. And I'm not in any way saying that a pastor shouldn't build a house, but if he's neglecting the ministry, then it's wrong. And I just remember this man telling me, he said that he was just consumed with building his house for like five years. And so they asked him, they asked the pastor, um, do you want to do the work of the ministry or do you want to work on your house? And he said, I want to work on my house. And resign, he resigned and just kept working on his house. Another story, uh, this is Highland Falls. Uh, after my brother-in-law, Paul Anderson, retired, well, retired, he uh, went to another ministry. This is way back. And probably I shouldn't have used names because if anybody happens to listen and connect things, but I don't mean, to, I don't even know, I don't even know this pastor's name. I just heard the story, but that a man came in, and they said he was doing excellent for well, the work that he was doing in the ministry. He loved people, and he preached hard, and he being doing a good job, but the church was growing, and there was so much uh, more work that needed to be done, and he was working on the side selling uh, he was a salesman on the side, and his biz, it was pro, he was doing super great. He was like one of the top salesmen for the company. He was doing super great. But the church was doing really well too, and the church went to him and said, we want to give you a raise, and we want to have you full time. And they thought that, they thought that that was, you know, he'd be all excited about that. But he was making so much money in his sales that he said, well, if you want somebody full time, then find someone else. And he resigned. And I'm not, I'm not teaching that a pastor doesn't have to... We know Apostle Paul. It, 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 but I'm not saying that he shouldn't work out. Um, but I am definitely saying that the ministry should be his top priority. And it should be that he has an attitude like Apostle Paul that he's working night and day and always planning, always praying, always thinking about the ministry, and that if he has to work some on the side, it is like very much controlled, and it's not going to uh, get him away from the ministry. And I'm saying that just not, I don't believe that's just my viewpoint. I, I don't believe that's just my opinion. I believe it's clear here, it is clear, Apostle Paul said, we labored night and day. He said that back, look back in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Some people say, I heard a pastor one time say, well, I have such a little church that uh, really, I got another job because I had... I didn't have much to do at my church. And I just thought, 
that. Well, you got the wrong perspective because if you have the right perspective, you can come up with more work than you could ever get, you could ever do if you have the right perspective. Pray for your pastor that he keeps the, keeps the right perspective. So, 1 Thessalonians 2, in verse 9, Paul says, For ye remember, brethren, you want to work, you want to work in such a way that people don't forget it. Don't forget it. He, say, he can say, Ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for labor night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. And then if you turn 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 10, says, Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face. So he's working in the ministry, and also he's just praying exceedingly. It just is... Um, He's consumed, he's consumed, like the, the Lord Jesus said, the zeal of my father's house hath eaten me up. The zeal of my father's house hath eaten me up. And so he is just applying himself to the ministry. First Thessalonians 5, and so this was a thing that was on, it's on Paul's mind is this working in the ministry, laboring in the ministry. And so he says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 12, he says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. Those that labor among you. He could have said, uh, for those that lead you. You know, make sure you know those that lead, the, lead you in the ministry. But he puts the emphasis on those that are working in the ministry. And Paul probably uh, knew that there are those that, well, if you keep, keep reading, it says, uh, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. So these ones that are just devoted to God's work. And then Paul says, And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. And that word, that unruly, is they're, they're, they're not, they're not, it's the, that word unruly is the same word for disorderly. And just stressing that they're not following the rules they're not in step with the Lord, and just beware, beware, and, ex and exhort them that are not um, following like they should. And the and Paul already said that his example is he's just working night and day. He's working night and day, and thinking and praying and serving. And so, go back to 2 Thessalonians. I think Paul is just try, he's trying to protect the Thessalonians from any kind of leadership that's going to come in that kind of compart, compartmental, compart, compartmentalizes and says, okay, I've got my work here. And I've got my ministry here, and I can, you know, just balance those out. That's not the mindset Paul had, and that's not the mindset, the whole, we don't want that. As, we know we've got to balance work, but we still have got to have, uh, like Jesus said, the zeal of my father's house has eaten me up. It's eaten me up. And so Paul says to them, and here's a church that had been so vibrant and so, I mean, so on fire for God in their testimony. So he's trying to protect them. Uh, he's just saying, keep following our leadership. Keep following our leadership. And he says, for yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. That is, we are following the Lord's, the Lord's guidance, the Lord's rules, 
Uh, we're marching in step with the Lord. Uh, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. Just saying they, they're work, they've been working. And um, any recompense that the church may have given them, they deserve it because they're working hard. And it says, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. So just follow follow that example of working hard. And he says, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but of busybodies. And I would deduce, and you can study this through, but I deduce from that, that it's these ones that are busybodies in spreading false doctrine that the Lord's not coming. We're already, you know, we're already in the day of the Lord. And they're not, and these, um, it's be like some men that they think they're so spiritual. They think they're so good that, you know, they don't have to get in line, uh, get in line like everybody else. Well, we all got to get in line. That means disorderly. We don't want to be disorderly. We all got to get in line with what the Lord says and his word and follow it. And we march onward, Christian soldiers, onward, Christian soldiers. Um, we're marching, we're marching uh, for the Lord and following what he says. And we're, we're going to be working. And um, so he says, verse 12, now them that are such, those that are not working in the they're busybodies, and uh, he says, Now them that are such we exhort, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Tell them to get to work. Tell them to get to work and um, to provide for themselves, eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. So it's a separate... He's, it's, it's, you see that when he says uh, they're them, I think that them, if you watch, the, if you watch your pronouns, uh, there's them that are not walking in step with what God's word is teaching, and they're not working like they should be, uh, and they're like a, uh, I think like, uh, some weeds growing up that they're not following God like they should be doing. And then Paul turns to the brethren because generally, as we've seen, as we've gone through Thessalonians, these people are serving God. They're following God. They're an example. And so in verse 13, he says, but ye, so it goes from them, them that aren't working and those that are being busybodies, and then he turns back, but ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Don't be sidetracked. Don't be sidetracked by these ones that are saying, no, we're not watching for the Lord's coming. We're not working like the Lord is coming. Uh, don't be sidetracked by that. In verse 14, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. So it's really some strong words. If you got somebody that they're not following the word of God, they've got their own, they've got their own thoughts, and they're going to do things their own way. And like a Joseph Smith, like he started out, he started out. The church tried to correct him, and he's just like, "No, I know more than I know more than any of what you know." And he went out and started his own movement. And the Lord here was protecting and warning about anything like that. Somebody that thinks that they're better, uh, they know more than God's word, just don't keep company with that kind of person. The Lord warns. and But then verse 15, it says, 
Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. And so it's not, in this case here, in, Thess- uh, in this chapter, it's not a criminal. Like in 1 Corinthians 5, the man had committed incest, uh, took his father's wife, uh, fornication, and they had to excommunicate him right out of the church. And he had to repent, and just you got to pray and and get into God's word. And say, well, what is this situation? What's this situation? Well, this man, he's getting off in his own step. He's kind of doing his own thing, and you think, ah, uh, I know he knows the Lord, but I'm not gonna go his way. I'm not gonna be like him. I'm going to. Um, we're, we're just going to have to tell him that we can't tolerate that, but you still encourage him as a brother. And then verse 16 says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. It's kind of like in, all, in these difficult situations, in these difficult situations when there are those that are stirring things up or those that are being contrary, the Lord will give peace. You just keep your, you keep your heart and mind on the Lord. He'll give peace. He'll give you peace even though you have to deal with. Uh, the Lord never said you just start, you just receive me as your Savior. You start going to church and there's no problems at church. It's just that church is just everything is uh, you know, these these saints, these saints of God that they never have any conflicts and they just follow me perfectly. No, the whole chapter here is there's going to be those that don't want to obey the Lord, that want to go their own way, that walk disorderly. What do you do? Well, make sure you don't follow them. Make sure you follow leadership like Paul, like Paul laid down. Um, and that's going to stick to God's word. And it's not Paul's word. It's God's word because Paul is given God's word. But Paul makes it so clear we're following the Lord. We're following the Lord. And so it's so fitting that when the Lord says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. You mean even when you're... Going through, uh, you know that. Uh, I read a statistic one time that it said more people quit church because of personal conflicts than they do for doctrinal reasons. Isn't that something? More people quit church because, oh, so-and-so said this to me and I can't stand them anymore. More people quit church for personal conflicts than they do for doctrinal reasons. Well, this passage is both. It's just people that were teaching that, you know, they're teaching false eschatology, and they're just getting off on their own thing, and they were trying to be leaders. They were trying to be leaders, but they weren't working like leaders. They're going to be a leader. They need to work like a leader in God's work. And so... But Paul says, you don't, don't count them as an enemy. Admonish them as a brother. But then the Lord says, in verse 16, and I know, just stressing this. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. Always? Well, sometimes I tell you what, you don't have it. We've been through difficult times. We've all, if you've been serving the Lord... For very many years, you've been through some times, some headbutting with Christians you love. Uh, it happens. We're battling to serve the Lord. and But the Lord can give us peace. It says, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means, and then the Lord be with you all. And it's just like he stressed, remember, in his prayer at the beginning of the chapter, 
It is the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. It's the Lord that's going to give us peace. It's the Lord that is with us. Then Paul says, the salutation of Paul with my own hand. Don't let anybody try to sneak one over on you. Paul saying, I this is what I wrote, and don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you otherwise, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. And then, just like the book of Revelation ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We need to depend upon the grace of God, the help of God in everything. So, and he promises that he giveth more grace. He gives more grace. He gives the grace we need. So, if that, I hope that didn't stir up more questions than, than it answers. Uh, there's a lot to think about in that passage. I've always heard that passage, like I mentioned, uh, just skimmed right over, and they say, if any man doesn't work, neither should he eat. And they don't apply it to the issue that's going on in the church there, or in, in the issue of leadership, or false teaching, or work it, working in ministry. So that's a lot to think about right there. And you can... Think all you want. Meditate all you want on the Lord, word of the Lord. Well, we're going we're to stop right there.